What's up residents, Alistair here, bringing you a breakdown of the first officially revealed Jurassic World Dominion footage. And before we get into it, I have to say, wow, this absolutely looks incredible. It just makes the way for Dominion that much more difficult. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Dangerville Team, where we share all sorts of dinosaur and Godzilla goodness. Right, let's not waste any more time, let's get to it. Some of you might have thought to yourself, Alistair, isn't this the same preview that played before Fast and Furious 9 earlier this year? Why, yes, residents, but there's a few things that make this release important. This prologue has a few extra clips that make it different from the previous version from earlier this year. It's also got improved visual effects and is slightly extended. The original short clip was never revealed to the public, only being displayed in the cinema. The only way most people were able to even watch the clip was through pirated handheld cam footage shot in the cinema, old school style, which didn't give the preview any favors. So because of that, we didn't really report on it. But thankfully, now it's publicly available for us all to gawk over. So let's get to breaking down the Jurassic World Dominion prologue. So the preview begins 65 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. We see the open plains of North America, including natural streams and eerie, almost alien vegetation. What initially are thought to be tree trunks begin to move through the mud, revealing them to be the legs of sauropods. Not just any sauropod, but the gigantic Dreadnoughtus, one of the largest dinosaurs on the planet. Standing at a height of 20 feet and a length of a whopping 85 feet, basically real world kaijus, and their scale is fully felt here as they lumber across the plains, their weight echoing through the land. And not a moment later, almost as if they're soaring towards the audience, in come the Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying animal that ever lived, standing as tall as giraffes with a wingspan of 36 feet. These things are absolutely terrifying. If you ever go to the Field Museum in Chicago, you can see the true scale of these monsters. In the background and foreground, we see the much smaller Pteranodons dwarfed by the scale of the Quetzalcoatlus, making sure to avoid its chopstick-like beak. Following this, we see a herd of Ankylosaurus having a drink and taking an afternoon bathe in the river. The lighting here is absolutely phenomenal. It feels like something you'd see in a nature documentary, especially in this next clip. Focusing on a nest of Pteranodon, if some of this isn't actually recordings of natural environments, I'd be very surprised the VFX is that good. This shot gives me massive Walking with Dinosaurs vibes, which I absolutely love. Next up is my favorite new dinosaur appearance, and that's from the Oviraptor, the famous omnivorous egg thief, doing what it's best at, and that's hunting eggs. And just look at those feathers. It's great to see a generally realistic dinosaur in a series famous for inaccurate dinosaurs. Next up, we see a massive herd of Nesutoceratops, the same dinosaur that starred in Battle at Big Rock, the dinosaurs that faced off against a wild Allosaurus. These horned dinosaurs dwarf humans, growing up to a length of 4.5 meters and weighed 1.7 tons, and they all appear to be migrating, potentially to where there's a greater food source. Following this, we see a new dinosaur make an appearance, Morus intrapedus, a small 1.2 meter long carnivore that's actually related to the T Rex of all dinosaurs. We see it scavenging the excess meat stuck in the teeth of a much larger carnivore. But what is this giant? Well, no other than the Giganotosaurus, making its triumphant entry into the Jurassic films. It rises up, dwarfing a grazing iguanodon, that is, until a challenger arrives, a Tyrannosaurus rex. But this rex has some notable differences from the InGen breed. This pure breed still has its proto-feathers, a light assortment of filament-like feathers scattered across its head and back which is, surprisingly, a pretty accurate representation of what feathers could have looked like on large theropods like the T-Rex. The two circle each other, growling, preparing to fight over the territory. In the Cretaceous period, food is scarce and oftentimes carnivores would have to fight for the land. But the fight is unfortunately a short one, as the Giganotosaurus grips the T-Rex's neck with its larger jaws and pushes the tyrant down a hillside onto its back. 
and with the T-Rex's immense weight of 7 tons, it's enough to shatter its ribs and break its spine, killing it almost instantaneously, its eyes dilating as it draws its last breath. But one upside, if you see it that way, is a mosquito flies down, drawing blood from the fresh corpse, which will inevitably be caught in amber, leading to the creation of our very own Rexy from the Jurassic Park and World Films. So the Rex you just saw is the original Rexy. Something you residents might have noticed when watching the footage is that during the Cretaceous scenes, there's actually no music which is intentionally designed to make these segments feel all the more natural, like a documentary. Flash forward to a measly 65 million years later, and we see Rexy attempting to escape the grasps of the US Fish and Wildlife Service, who are pursuing her in a helicopter, most likely attempting to tranquilize her and take her to a safer location, but the T-Rex doesn't know that. Cut to an outdoor cinema, we see a kid walking around with a fresh tub of popcorn, and he seems content until he heard the footsteps in the distance, and the T-Rex emerges from the shadows and it begins to work its way to the front of the screen. What I love about this scene is that Rexy is acting completely like an animal. She's not thinking about food, she's not trying to eat people, she's just confused, scared, and trying to defend herself. The footage from 65 million years ago really juxtaposes against the man-made environments we see today. It almost lets us as the audience know what kind of world she really longs for. Now, this is the money shot. Just iconic. Now this is actually pretty funny. The man holding the tranquilizer gun fires, misses, and almost knocks out some old dude. That would have been tragic, but thank god for the glass. The T-Rex, finally finding a route out of the cinema, wanders into a lush forest, escaping the immediate grasp of the rescue team. The team continue their mission, and the title rolls with an epic new melody made by the brilliant Michael Giacchino. Who's been the composer throughout the trilogy? He's done an exceptional job. We're met with a to-be-continued screen stating it's coming to theaters this summer, which only makes the wait more painful. God, that was just so epic. Everything from the visual effects, the way the dinosaurs behave, the music, the directing, it's all exciting. It feels good to have Colin back in his elements. Now, one thing that was confirmed by the director, Colin Trevorrow, is that this footage won't be in the final film exactly like this. This prologue sets up the themes and ideas for Jurassic World Dominion, but this clip won't be present as is. What's more likely is that we'll see this scene take place from a main character's perspective, like Owen Grady or Alan Grant. So we'll witness the T-Rex rampage from different angles and it'll likely be extended. What's also likely is that the film is already jam-packed with stuff, considering it has such an extensive cast list and is nearing a two and a half hour runtime well over being the longest in the series. So they've had to cut the prehistoric prologue for time, which is a shame because it would have been great for a wide audience to be able to see these animals in their natural habitat. Expect a full trailer for Dominion between December and February. Hopefully this won't be like a Godzilla vs Kong scenario where we don't get a trailer until like two months before the film's release. Knowing Universal, they usually want to get a head start with their marketing. So, what did you think about the first look at Jurassic World Dominion? Did you like it? Did you somehow hate it? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like because it helps this video reach even more fans. Don't forget to subscribe and stomp that notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.